Hello there, this is DBT, and these are the rooms. And alright, first of all, this is a video where there's gonna be zero gameplay. It's all about me talking about what's happening in the game, the changes, and also if you're coming here to watch some races, unfortunately this is not the video for you. On top of that, the information that I'm gonna be uh, looking at, it's mostly gonna be for people, for players that have been playing this game for the past, let's say, few months that are familiar with what the game is at the moment. For super, super new players, all this information is going to be completely useless, so don't worry about it. This is only for people who are in the middle of the transition between what the game was and what the game is now. So, in case you don't know what I'm talking about, today in, it's September the 9th when I'm recording this, when you're watching this. And I'm sorry, not September the 9th, September 29th. Um, and this is when the update went live yesterday the creators posted information as to what were the patch notes and all of that and obviously that got a lot of people riled up because of all the changes that are happening in the game and like i said just today it actually went live and people are being able to download it so first of all if you haven't downloaded it don't download it don't get it don't update that's the very first thing that I want to make really clear over here. Don't do it. You will have to do it eventually. But I want to give you my thoughts on this before you jump into it. So, the main new, and I think what's getting everybody, me included, riled up, is the fact that Max Pro cars, also known as Legacy cars, are becoming hybrids. And, alright, just to give you, uh, in case you happen to not know what the fuck I'm talking about. We have cars like this. Uh, a max pro car and if we look at the upgrades you by the way i haven't up, uh, updated my game that's why uh, it's still showing like this so this is basically the before right um so these are the max pro cars in order to take to max you can upgrade exclusively with credits so that's a good use of your credits once you have upgraded it all the way to max let's say like uh, this i have upgraded to max if you're to upgrade into the pro section when you start those upgrades they start costing fusion coins and parts this is the old type of cars the legacy cars but then there's also the new type of cars the um hybrid type of cars like this where if you look at it from the get it asks you for parts and for uh fusion coins you cannot upgrade this at all for credits and in fact if we look at something like um it should be around here this that i've i've been upgrading my pagani mola if you look at it once you get to a certain point above level five of the upgrades on a on a uh, hybrid it asks you for some parts and kits so obviously like i said you probably know all of this already but i'm just giving a little bit of context so like i said the very first change that happened or the most important one the most noticeable is that any car that used to be max pro meaning the old type of cars now suddenly are pro only they have fallen in line with all of the newer cars in the game like the hybrids like the kunta shopi that I already have at pro or the one i just showed the um the imola now there's also another type of pro cars like this that were the old one but i'm not gonna touch into that because they were already a bit messed up they still get even more messed up but you know the main point is talking about the max pro ones so all right um so yeah cars that you were able to upgrade before for credits uh for the first five upgrades of each one of the stats and then for parts now it can only be upgraded for fusion coins no longer for credits and you need parts and kits and that is for every single car in the game all of the cars have been made to follow this and uh, obviously that is pretty bad because when you do the math for a car of this type of the hybrid and now all of the cars in the game you need a stupid amount of parts in order to upgrade them um in a previous in in the this type of cars the max pro in order to take it to pro you need 15 tires 15 uh exhaust 15 whatever so basically you need in total 60 of the combined parts plus 60 engine and 60 tech so that makes it 180 parts that you need to upgrade this thing right but the thing is for this type of cars you need much more than that you still need only 60 engines and 60 um techs but then you need 55 of each one of these so when you add it up we're talking about 330 parts that you need in order to upgrade this thing so from 180 to 330 that's a lot but not only that you also need kits in total you need 160 kits 
in order to do it. So we're talking about combining the kits and the part. We're talking about near 500 little pieces that you need in order to take one of these cars to pro. And that is where this thing is absolutely crazy. The, the requirements for this has gone all insanely high. Now, there is another thing that also happened, and that is the change on the price to upgrades. Now, there's been a lot of, of well, I've seen confusion on Discord as to how much did it increase, did it increase, is it cheaper, is it more expensive, what the hell this is. Well, let me tell you. First of all, this, by the way, this is a screenshot that I got from Discord, this is not my account, obviously. Um, but you see something like this, and you see that this is gonna cost a hundred, a million and one hundred thousand. You're like, a million never before has an upgrade cost this much. Wait, no, this is not an upgrade. This is the offer to buy the parts that are needed to upgrade. These are two very different things, and I know that it's a bit confusing because in the end, they are located in the same place, right? If you see this, and actually at first glance I was fooled by this too. It looks like, yeah, this thing is gonna cost 1 million, in fact, because I have a discount, otherwise it would cost 2 millions over here. You can see this one that I'm circling. By the way, I added trails, trails to my mouse so that it's more visible where I'm aiming and what I'm trying to highlight, but anyway. So yeah, this sounds absolutely crazy, but this is not the case. This is not an upgrade. This is, you have to spend this much to buy the parts if you don't have them. That is what, what I want to make a lot of emphasis on. This is not the price of upgrades. The price of upgrades, according to some information that we got before and that now is being confirmed um, in Discord, this is the price for upgrading um, cars. And the prices are fixed. So any car of a rank of 1140 and under, any upgrade is fixed at a 50,000 Fusion Coins price, meaning that the first upgrade is gonna cost 50,000. The second upgrade is gonna cost 50,000. The third upgrade is gonna cost 50,000. The fourth up, you get my idea. So remember, now pretty much all of the cars have 10 upgrades for fusion coins because they have been turned into those other type of cars. So now you can no longer upgrade for credits. It's all for fusion coins and it's 10 levels to upgrade. So we're talking about over here that again cars of 1140 and below cost 50,000 per upgrade now before the way it used to work is that the first upgrade it was i don't know um 8,000 next upgrade would be like 20,000 next upgrade the third upgrade is going to be 50,000 this the next upgrade is going to be 80,000 and the final upgrade or whatever is going to be 150,000 obviously i'm just making up numbers on those but it's so that you have an idea in fact I just did a little bit of Googling to give you uh, a, an example of what I'm talking about. This is the Mercedes-Benz EQS, and here's the prices that uh, you needed to pay in order to upgrade this thing before. And uh, the first upgrade would cost you 4000 and the next one 8 10 14 16 32 34 62 64 blah, 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 blah. And a total of um, 372000 to upgrade one of, the, of, of its stats all the way up, right? So, uh, that, that makes it so that the grand total to upgrade all of the four stats is this much. Now, I bring this up because I wanted you to see that, yeah, these prices go increasing this way, and this applied for every single car in the game. However, what I'm saying over here is that for this car at this rank, every single upgrade would cost 50000 which will make it more expensive. We'll go into that in a second. So, over here, uh, same thing, right? So from 12.30 to right before this one, it, it's gonna cost 100,000 for 13, basically this is based on the brackets, right? For the bracket of 13.20, which, you know, if you wanna go into details, it goes from 12.33 to 13.22, but you know how the bracket, brackets were by now. Uh, so cars for this bracket, uh, is gonna cost 120,000 per upgrade, 14, 10, 150, for 1500, it's gonna cost 170, so on and so forth and we have obviously the kings of the game that are gonna cost 250,000 per upgrade now this sounds very expensive and it is very expensive you want to know exactly how expensive it is now that they have changed this to be fixed prices well this is what it is each car can take up to 40 upgrades because it's 10 upgrades per stat and yeah so 250,000 uh, fusion coins times 40 upgrades a class S car is going to cost you 10 million fusion coins to pro. 
and obviously you see all the numbers in the in the rest of the cars this is more expensive absolutely giving you exactly the example that we were looking at with the eqs it used to cost 1.5 approximately 1.5 million now it will cost you 2 million and that is a small up uh, a small change in the price to be honest because then when you have something like um a centenario that being max pro would cost you um about 4 million credits to to take to max and another 3.7 to pro 3.7 million fusion coins versus 10 million it's a huge difference so the increase was absolutely insane it is there and it sucks but still there's more to talk about if we look at this this is another screenshot that i got it's just like the the confirmation that for example this this is the Asterion that recently got rebalanced. Um, the upgrades cost 100 and, 170, which is exactly this. In the rank of 1500, 170 per upgrade. If we look at the GTR Nismo, this is a peculiar case because it actually sh should be priced. Uh, this falls outside of the B uh, bracket. This falls into the A bracket, but for some reason it's still priced at 200,000, which, oh shit, is the price of this bracket 200,000 so I don't know why it didn't exactly fall over here I don't know if there's some some rank discrepancy or maybe it's because it's gonna get rebalanced who knows but my point is here just to show you that indeed a car of uh, class B is gonna cost 200,000 per upgrade regardless if it's if it's the first or the 10th upgrade they will all cost the same now, I know that this sounds like a slap in the face, and it is, don't get me wrong. But here's why I wanted to take a little bit of time, like I said in the post that I made yesterday on YouTube, saying that I wanted to take some time to process this information and see what it is and what it means for the future of the game. And this is, you know, using different points for context. Now, we're gonna go into the part of the video where I'm gonna start going into more numbers. So I hope this is not too dissing for you. I'm not saying that this is difficult math or anything, but I know that some people are allergic to numbers, but hey, here we go. Here's a little bit of a spreadsheet that I made in order to illustrate precisely the changes that were happening. Um, I'm gonna call the old days when, uh, let's say five months ago, the old days where uh, there were no ads for fusion coins where you know fusion coins were actually way harder to acquire and that is precisely what I, I i'm trying to show over here so in the old days uh you would get maximum of 22,000 22, fusion coins for gauntlet if you're an elite league and doing your five days is daily and then you also get a daily reward of 5,000. in case you're not aware of that you can always get a daily reward if you go into the shop you go into bundles, oh, right here, I already have it. Um, so you claim this and it's 5,000. This hand has been available for a very long time now. So if you didn't know, well, I mean, I guess you have been missing out on it. Some parts and some fusion coins. So these are the 5,000 fusion coins that I'm counting over here. So just with these two things daily, you were able to get 22 plus five, 27,000 fusion coins um, daily, right? And, uh, that's the 100 uh, ignore this 100 percent for the meantime this comes in the next part that i'm going to show you now we're going to go into what i called and very accurately accurately i called the golden age of fusion coins and i don't know if you remember but i did mention this in several videos that we were in the golden age of fusion coins why because you could get the 22,000 from Gauntlet, as usual, the 5,000 from the daily reward, but on top of that, you could get 100,000 fusion coins from ads. So that makes it 127,000 fusion coins daily. So this is where the percentage comes. If 27,000, that was the old days, was 100%, that's what you could get. In the golden age of fusion coins, you get 470% total uh, of what you get. Or I guess you know what I'm saying, right? We're we're talking that we're almost getting almost five times as much fusion coins during the golden age of fusion coins than what we did before. I bring this up because this is something that seems that people are forgetting about when they're thinking about the changes that have been happening. We got used to the golden age of fusion coins, which lasted approximately two months and some. This started, I believe, when the neon season began. 
they added the the in that in that update they added the uh, watch ads for fusion coins and it was beautiful because we suddenly got a lot more fusion coins than before now this brings us to today after the update well the numbers are the same there's no change i just want that to sink in for a second Today, after the update, there has been no change as to what we can get, all right? Now, why then, why does it matter to show this too? Well, let's go back, let's hide this, and let's, let's look at earnings in context. Again, we're back in the old days where we could only get 27,000 fusion coins a day. If we look at the centenario, the centenario would take 3.7 million fusion coins to to pro it, ignoring the credits part we're just talking about the fusion part the fusion coins part it would take 3.7 million inflation zero percent because this is when the game was as it was so there had been no change now if we multiply the daily amount of fusion coins that you would get times 30 days you get uh, the monthly earning of fusion coins 810,000 uh, fusion coins how much does that buy from the centenario to about 22% of the centenario? In a month, you can only get enough for 22% of the centenario. In a month. How many days do you need with this amount of fusion coins daily? How many days do you need in order to pro the centenario? 137 days. That's a lot of days. This is why it was very difficult to upgrade cars. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not counting things like Gauntlet and other means to get fusion coins, but they are still not are not very significant, because if you remember in Gauntlet, it used to be the case where you would get about 100,000 if you ended on first place in Gauntlet, in Elite League. How many people got that? Very little. And an average play, player like me, weekly I would get like 60,000 fusion coins. That's all we got. It was hard days. It really was hard days. Now. Again, let's look at the golden age of fusion coins. I already show you all this, but if we look at the numbers, now we have the centenario, same price, no inflation because it didn't change price or anything. But now if we look at how much we were earning a month because we were getting 127 daily times 30, that makes it so that we got 3.8 million fusion coins a month. How much does that mean for the for the uh, centenario? How much can I afford of the centenario? 102%. It's more than I need to take it to pro. So in a month, you got enough to pro your centenario. That's fantastic, right? How many days you needed to pro? 29 days in order to pro your car. Compare this to this. It's a huge difference, right? You needed how much is this? Like uh, five months, four months, however much. No, how much is that? Uh, 125 months, right? Some whatever. I can do math, um, says the guy with the spreadsheet. But yeah, 137 versus 29. It's a huge difference. This is why I call this the golden age of fusion coins. Because in a month, you could get the centenario at pro just on fusion coins alone. That's beautiful, isn't it? Now, I'll give you a different example now of the a, a different type of car. We're going to hide this again. Oh, crap. I meant to hide this, and I'm going to show you the Tushek. The Tushek is a hybrid car. Hybrid cars, like I mentioned, they have been always very expensive to upgrade. They take 7.4 million fusion coins to pro. There was no inflation at the time. With a monthly earning of 27,000 times 30, still 810,000, how much of the car can I afford? 11% if that. It's half of what I can afford or compared to the Centenario because obviously this costs twice as much. So yeah, how many days do you need to pro this car? 274 days to pro it from the daily Fusion Coin Rewards. It's a lot of days. A lot of days. We're talking about, what, nine months? However much this is. I don't, I don't know. I, again, I can do basic math when I'm doing this type of videos. But anyway, that's a lot. But if we look again at the golden age of fusion coins, same price. Now we earn this. Oh, guess what? Now, based on what we get monthly, meaning this times 30, 3.8 million. Oh, guess what? That's half of the car. So in a month, 
I, I can afford half of the car. In two months, days needed to pro. In almost two months, I have enough to pro the car. That's beautiful. I mean, it's still a lot of, of, of resources that you need to spend in order to do that, but it's much more doable. This is why I call that the golden age of fusion coins. Now, let's look at the terrible, terrible world that it is today. Today after the update. Same thing, the basic uh, numbers are the same as the golden age of fusion coins. So what changed? The car prices changed. Centenario, as I showed in this table, uh, 1860 car, is gonna take 10 million fusion coins to upgrade, and that is what we have over here, 10 million fusion coins. What was the inflation? 270% was the inflation compared to what it was originally. So that means this cost nearing almost three times as much, right? Not exactly, but nearing three times as much. All right, fucking expensive, I get that. Let's, um, yeah. So, again, doing the same numbers, how much do we earn in a month? Because we still have the ads and everything, this hasn't changed at all. We still earn 3.8 million. How much, what is the percentage of the car that I can afford with that? 38%, 38%, and that means that I need 70, almost 79 days of daily rewards in order to be able to afford this. All right, I did a little bit of a pause right there. Uh, just to be able to hide this for a second. So we're just going to focus on Golden Age and today. So, as I was saying, uh, let me get rid of this. And as I was saying, um, we can afford 38% of the car per month. And we need a total of almost 79 days to, to pro the car, right? It's fucking crazy. It's a lot. When you compare it over here, we're talking about we need more than double the days from almost 30 to almost 80. Well, yeah, approximately. It's more than double. It's crazy, right? It's fucking insane. Yeah, it's it's crazy. It's a, it's a crazy price. I'm not gonna deny that. And however, if we look at it, and this is exclusively from a centenario, that's why I specifically showed the centenario. However, if we look at it from the perspective of the two check, then things change a little bit. The numbers are still crazy, but you will see that they're not as crazy anymore. Why? Because the, the Touch 2 check costed 7.4 million during the golden age of fusion coins. The 2 check now costs 10 million. It's still an increase. How, what was the inflation? 35%. I mean, it says 135, but the 35% was what got inflated. So it costs 35% more. It's still an increase? Yeah, absolutely. But it no longer is the 170 percent or however you want to look at it it's it's uh 270 in context or 170 more same way that this is 135 in context or 35 percent more however you want to look at it but yeah so this thing increased a lot almost three times this thing increased a little bit just a little bit i mean it's still a lot of resources right but so uh before you needed to to play or get your daily rewards for 58 days in order to pro it now you need to do it almost for 80 days again it's still a lot but it's not as much comparatively speaking the increase for this type of cars was not as high as it was for this type of cars and that is exactly what i want to talk about in just a second so why did I show you this in this way because I want to show you the comparison and I don't know why I didn't delete this color just doing this now let's look at the entire context of the old days, golden age, and today. In fact, let's forget about the golden age, because we already we already confirmed that showing the golden age versus the update, yeah, this is bad, right? You can see that absolutely it increased crazily from, from 30 days to 78, from 58 days to 78 days. It's crazy, right? But now let's look at it outside of the golden age of fusion coins, and then we get different numbers. We, we get a different perspective of what it is that they did. Now you have that a centenario, regardless of the price, if we look exclusively at how much uh, of the car you can afford before in the old days, before the golden age of fusion coins, you can afford 21, 22% per month. Now you can afford 38%. You needed 137 days. Now you only need 78. You see why this 
is a matter of putting it in context. Same thing with the Tushik. This thing you needed in the old days, you needed 274 days to be able to pro this thing. Now you need 78. I hope this this I hope I'm presenting it to you in a way that shows exactly what Gameloft just did. And what I think was everybody's error on when they were playing this game and enjoying what it was. The error was taking the golden age of fusion coins for granted. This is why I called it, and I did it quite a few videos ago, a long time ago, when this started. I called it the golden age of fusion coins because I realized they were given a lot of fusion coins for the old prices. I, I didn't know that they were going to make this change. In reality, I thought they were going to get rid of the ads and just go back to the old days. But they didn't. They went in a different direction. But I wasn't wrong to think that this was the anomaly. These two are what is normal. Again, the prices increased a lot from a centenario to 10 million, from a Tushek from 7.4 to 10 million. But when you look at it, how much time you need to invest how much the, the, the developers or whoever makes these decisions, how many days they wanted you to spend in order to upgrade the cars, you start seeing that actually right now, today after the update, even after the increase on the prices and all of that bullshit, we still need less days to upgrade than how it used to be. This is why I wanted to show this. I, I, I thought of saying it in a regular video with gameplay, but I realized that I was going to be giving you a lot of numbers without actually, you know, uh, being able to see. I think it's much more helpful when you see the numbers here and you can make a quick comparison that instead of 274, you need 78 days. I think that's what, what matters. So with all of this, I'm just trying to show that this, this change that they did with the prices, was it a crazy increase in price? Yes. Is it absolute garbage when you compare it to how it was um, uh, just yesterday and a couple days before? Yes. But when you consider that the golden age of fus fusion coins was just the adjustment period, and we'll go back to how the game used to be four months ago, three months ago, around three, four months ago, whatever it was, before the neon season began, before they started giving ads for uh, fusion coins, then you start seeing that, well, you know what? We sad to say this, but even in this situation, we still have it much better than we did before. 137 days to pro it before, 78 days to pro it now. 278 to pro this, 78 now. So, again, I hope this was useful for you to see this in a different light. I know this is a very long video, but it's, I don't know. I, I really felt that I needed to, to take a deep look into this. Now, real quick. Credits, wildcards, this is absolutely crazy. Credit requirements did increase a lot. I don't want you to believe that that's not the case, all right? Um, because now that cars in the today, they require, regardless of the fusion coins that we already talked all of that, I did say that these type of cars now require, um, uh, hold on, let me go here, upgrade. They require kits, right? And kits, <coughs> excuse me. Kids need to be converted from wildcards or whatever the hell they're going to be called now. Um, if we go to the inventory, you can see this type of wildcards, right? You need to convert this and, <coughs> excuse me, the conversions are as follow. I have it here on the table. In order to convert one single bronze wildcard, it takes 50,000. And now that every single car requires uh, kits from the wildcards, every single car requires 160 one of them. How many credits do you need? 8 million to convert 160. 8 fucking million credits to convert them. For silver, meaning for class A, you need 12 million. And for gold, uh, meaning class S, you need 16 million credits. Now, this is absolutely nuts, but it sadly, sadly, annoyingly, it makes sense. What the Gameloft just did by making this entire change is making credits useless. You could use credits before to upgrade your cars, sure. Now you can't. What are you going to do with your credits? You can only buy some cars in the in the garage for credits and it's a limited amount. But after you bought it, what do you need credits for nowadays? They're useless. Oh, no they're not. Since now you cannot use it for upgrading, Gameloft decided, you know what? Now credits are going to be for one thing and one thing alone. 
and that is gonna be to convert your fucking wild cards. This is a pain in the ass. And more so because Gameloft in their wiseness, and uh, notice the sarcasm with which I'm using this, Gameloft decided that you can only convert so many I'm not gonna convert them right now because unfortunately I don't want to do more movements at this moment. But you can only convert 10 wildcards at a time. And then after that, once you convert 10 wildcards, you gotta wait 12 hours. 12 fucking hours before you can convert another um, another 10. You know how long it's gonna take for you to convert 160? You're gonna be able to convert 20 per day, assuming you don't forget to do it every 12 hours. 20 per day you're gonna need what eight eight days to do it eight days just to convert them eight days and eight million just that it's insane this part is definitely insane but like i said it sadly makes sense because gameloft wanted you to to wanted to to make credits useless and only to be used for this particular thing now, with all of that said, to kind of wrap it up a little bit, because like I said, this is a very long video. Um, I do want to say one thing that it's true. Annoying as this change is of changing all of the cards to be hybrid type of upgrades, at least, at least it does one good thing for newish players. And that is making the upgrade system stream streamlined. Now, every single car is upgraded the exact same way. Now, there will be no more questions as to why this car first with upgrades and then I need some parts, why this car needs only kits, why this other car needs parts, but then kits. Now, there's only one single upgrade system and now it is consistent. Like I said, I'm not happy about it, but it is consistent, if anything. Now, another thing that kind of uh, sort of a good thing that comes from this change and i just say very much sort of is the fact that it allows uh, a bit more interesting tuning on the cars why is that right now if we go to this car for example if i want to upgrade it let's say that i want to make it uh, i want to mp tune it because this falls outside of the bracket is not at the top of the bracket so maybe i want to make it into 1680 if i want to tune this thing first i need to take it to max so i need to upgrade five 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 all of this to to the max and only then i can start upgrading pro so basically uh, let's say that i want to make it accelerator uh, uh, or top speed based which normally in a in a regular uh, pro car uh, you know, the festival cars, you can do 10 0, 10 0. I hope you know what I'm talking about. Um, in these cars, you can't. You have to do 5 5 5 5, and then you need to upgrade maybe to 5 0 5 0. That's kind of have to has to be done. So, in the meantime, you upgraded a bunch of things that you didn't necessarily want to upgrade, but you did. Now, once this gets turned into pro only, and this car having 10 levels of upgrade, you can now go back to 10 0 10 0 for the upgrade. So that's that's something that can be done now. Obviously, I'm giving a very specific example with the 10 0 10 0, but you can do whatever you want in that and you can experiment a bit more. So that is a very, very small server lining from this. So the, the annoying part is that it is it is going to destroy all of the mp tune cars for max pro cars for example if we look what car did i just tune recently the uh 370z this one i i tuned and this is what i was saying i had to take it to 5555 to take it to max and then over here i applied 3043 and this gave me a tune of 1322 when this gets converted because um because of how they change I, I can go a lot into details because even i don't know necessarily exactly how it works or i cannot explain it at least but because now all of the upgrades are based on tires that are going to increase top speed and handling at the same time as opposed to max where it was only an upgrade of top speed for example or whatever it was now this this is going to change to what i don't know but i've seen a lot of people saying that their multiplayer tunes for this type of cars have been officially destroyed so that is a, a bad side effect of this. So keep that in mind. Now, another quick thing that I wanted to mention that uh, this is a discussion that I had with AZ and other people also, but you know, it's uh, something that I knew it was gonna happen and people kept on saying, no, 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 it's not true, it's not true. I don't know if you remember, but I did say some time ago that the Centenario, I was expecting it to get nerfed. 
Why? Because the Centenary was a cheap car. For 3.7 million, you would get one of the best Class S cars in the game. Are there better cars? Yes, absolutely. But Centenary is one of the best. Amongst the best. Why would you go for a Tushik and spend twice as much as the Centenary for about the same performance? It doesn't make sense. It didn't make sense. So that's why I was expecting cars like the Centenary and really good uh, Max Pro cars to be nerfed. Instead, what Game Love did was normalize the price. So whether it's an old car or a new car, they cost the same and they take exactly the same amount of parts and whatever else to upgrade. I think it's very clear what Game Love was trying to do. They have gotten rid of all of those Max Pro cars, they made it into Pro, they made them fall in line with what today Game Loft wants you to spend to upgrade one of these cars. So there you go. Now, another thing that uh, I quickly wanted to, to mention is the fact that you should probably upgrade, as you see over here, as soon as possible. And I'm not talking to upgrade the, 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 the game. If you haven't updated, don't. I mean upgrade your cars. Why? Centenario. Again, I'm using the Centenario because it's, I think it's the, the example that everybody will know. The Centenario would... This is the prices for upgrading it before. And credits. And how much it takes. All of this added up gives you this much. And times four because it's four stats. This is how many credits you needed to upgrade. And then on the Fusion Coin parts... This is how much you needed in order to upgrade one of its stats to the to the pro to pro, and this is the total once you add it up in times four. This is the total that, of fusion coins that you need in order to pro it. If you haven't updated the game, don't update it. If you have resources, take all of your old cars to max three 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 or something close to that, which is exactly what I did. If you notice, I am extremely poor on fusion coins and that is because i did pr that precisely for pretty much all of my cars i mean the cars that i knew i needed to work on like you remember how i recently got the devel 16 if you notice that's exactly what i did i took it to max and i took it to three 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 why well because uh, th this this price you know i expected the class s price to be a little bit lower but still by taking it to max pro and three three you see that i spent a lot of credits to take it to pro but i have a lot of credits so it's fine i was okay wasting them and then first upgrade 37,000, second upgrade 74,000, and the third upgrade 111,000. if you compare that to what this upgrades would cost me this ended up being much cheaper than this by 113 fusion coins i mean 213 fusion coins cheaper this upgrade ended up being also 180 cheaper this upgrade, and the, you see what I'm saying? Around over here is where the price is very similar, so maybe you don't want to apply necessarily this one. You would save 9,000 Fusion Coins, but in the big scheme of things, 9,000 is not that much when you compare it to the 200 and something thousand that you're saving. So this is what I did to a lot of my cars. I did not take them to four and five because once I update, the fourth upgrade is gonna be about the same price, but the fifth one is gonna be 50% cheaper. Look at that, 465 versus 250. So if you have cars right now and you haven't updated the game, don't. Just go for your cars, take them to max, meaning spend all your credits in maxing them, and in pro, don't take anything past three, maybe four if you wanna be brave, but I would suggest just to keep it at three so you have more fusion coins to spend in different cars. I did this for a bunch of cars, for example. Um, if we look at the, over here in class A, I recently got the uh, Aston Martin 177, because obviously I got it through the uh, um, through the season pass. Guess what I did? I took it to max three, 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 three. Why? Because this upgrade, the fourth upgrade, is gonna cost me uh, two hundred and twenty thousand once I update. Right now, it's almost the same price, so I don't want to do it because I'd rather save this and use those in in another car right now while I still can. So I took it to 3333. Three, three, three. So the upgrade 1, 2, and 3 ended up being much cheaper than what it's going to be once I update. I did this for a bunch of cars. For example, the I also did it for the Veyron. Um, it's another car that I've been meaning to upgrade for a long time, but never did. Same, took it to max 3333. Three, three, three. I did this, for example, in, in the... Um, hold on, hold on, I'll get to it. 
Eventually... Oh shit, it's not in here, it's in Class B, I'm an idiot. I'm looking for the 911 GT3 RS. Same thing, I did not care for a second of MP tuning. Good thing, because now that we know MP tuning is dead, it doesn't even matter if I had done that. Um, I took it to max, 3333. Three, three, three. Do this for every car that you know that you want to upgrade eventually. This is going to take you a while, obviously, because it's so expensive. But for any car that you want to eventually upgrade, go ahead right now. Take it to max 3333. Three, three, three. That's where it's going to be cheaper. Because right now in Class B, uh, this next upgrade would cost 193 for a 5090. And 5090 will cost 180. So you see, even this is already more expensive. So just take it to 3333. Three, three, three. That's where you want them. As far as the regular pro cars, the ones that need 220 kits, I cannot help you in that because I don't have any car that I'm working on like that. Um, but for example, another peculiar case was the Pagani Imola that I've been working on upgrading. Oh shit, that's not, that's the wrong Pagani. It's this one. Um, right now, for example, I don't want to apply this one anymore. I mean, I don't have, I could convert more kits and all of that, but I don't want to do it right now. Why? Because it's going to cost me 279, while according to this, it's going to cost me 220 to apply the, the 8, 9, and 10. It's going to be much cheaper. So this is something else that you want to keep in mind. Just upgrade to the point where it's, a, it's cheaper than what it's going to be. The moment that it's going to be the, around the same price or more expensive, stop upgrading. And like I said, this is my suggestion. Obviously, you're free to do whatever you want with your resources and your cars. But I think this is the smarter way to look at it and to make the most out of what we have right now. If you have credits and you have cars that you want to upgrade eventually to, to Pro, like for example, I have also the... Um, I was thinking of doing this. The... Hold on, I'll get to it. The Fenner. I have the Fenner. I never upgraded it. I always thought, ah, maybe someday. Well... At least right now I can spend 4 million credits in taking it to max because I haven't upgraded it at all. Uh, taking it to 5555 five, 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 it's going to take me 4 million credits. And then from there I can spend some fusion coins because I don't have a lot in trying to upgrade it a little bit more, you know? So any bit that you can upgrade, upgrade. So long as it's a car that you know that you want. I haven't upgraded this because I'm not completely sure that I want to upgrade this car. But I knew that Devel was a car I wanted to work in, so that's why I did it. So, that's how we spent just now about 40 minutes talking about this whole thing. I know it's a lot of information, it's a lot of numbers, no gameplay at all. But I thought that it was important for me to give you the, my, my, my uh, perspective on these changes. Again, I'm not trying to defend, ga defend game love. don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that I'm happy about this. But as I, as I explained through, through this, this thing... The golden age of fusion coins lasted what it lasted. We could, we made the most that we could. I hope you did. I sure did. But now we're back to normalcy in the new updates, which is still better than what the game was three, four months ago. A little better. Also a little worse because of this. So in the end, I think we is, we end up in a very similar place to where we were. We're upgrading cars. It's difficult. It's grindy. You can still do it. If you put your, your your effort into it. I know a lot of people are like, I'm going to quit the game and all of that. I understand why a lot of people are upset. Um, I'm not that upset. Because like I said, and I try to warn everybody, this was not going to last. If you know Gameloft, if you know mobile games, you know that they don't give you good stuff for long. They give you good stuff, they see how it works, and then they make it worse. So, unfortunately, this was a peak for this year now we're going downhill and we'll see if eventually we'll get another peak and just mark my words if we get another peak where good things are happening fucking make the most out of it while you can because after that it's gonna get worse in fact i have a little something to show you over here give me one second this is the free forums for asphalt 8 and i post here from time to time when you know whatever is happening for example over here i was asking on september 21st why there was an update in the google play store but the only reason why i brought you here is so that you see what my my signature has been there for a long time about asphalt 8 and its future enjoy what it is today for tomorrow it will surely be worse i don't mean to sound like a doomsday prophet but I think I've proven my point. 
All right, so there's more stuff that happened in the update with the wild cards, with the um, the conversion of the free upgrades and all of that. At this point, I don't think I need to talk about that. It's uh, kind of easy to figure it out. And this video is long enough as it is. I just really wanted to give you my perspective on the earnings and all of that. And maybe in another video, I'll talk a little bit more about those with actual gameplay because I have a bunch of MP2 cards that I never got to test and I need to make videos about them as soon as possible before I update. So expect some uh, videos coming up in the channel over the next couple weeks showing mp2 cards that are no longer applicable because it was in the old days so there you go that's all i wanted to talk about right now again sorry that it was an extremely uh, long video but i hope it was helpful to you in any way um if you found it useful share it around why not but that's it thank you very much for watching and i'll see you on the next one take care everybody and stay safe and for the love of god let's hope that the game gets better eventually Bye bye